Animal charities have made a desperate appeal to save 66 chimpanzees who were captured from the wild by humans for medical experiments, infected with deadly diseases like hepatitis, then abandoned deep in the jungles of Liberia. The chimps who live on six islets in the country's south were experimented on at a controversial virus testing laboratory set up by the New York Blood Center, NYBC, in 1974. The project's director at the time had promised the organization would continue to provide lifetime care for the animals who have become dependent on humans for food and shelter. But the company now disputes this. It stopped the research in 2005, leaving them on six small islets wholly reliant on human support. In one heartbreaking video that shows the bond between humans and animals, the chimps hug the volunteers who are currently their only lifeline as they arrive by boat to the island to feed them. But researchers pulled funding in March, leaving the future of the 66 chimps plus a baby born just this week in doubt after it had been in a protracted row with the government. They are now being cared for by animal protection charity Humane Society of the United States, HSUS, who needs 20,000 pounds worth of public donations every month to feed and care for them. Over three decades ago, the New York Blood Center entered into an agreement with the Liberian government to set up the ViLab project deep in the jungle, around 40 miles from the capital, Monrovia. The chimpanzees were held in cages on the islands known collectively as Monkey Island, which have little natural food and are surrounded by undrinkable salt water. NYBC, which supplies blood to around 200 hospitals across the United States, began trapping these wild chimpanzees and infecting them with diseases like hepatitis and river blindness so they could develop vaccines. It was around this time that the United States banned the import of wild chimpanzees into the country. Humane Society claims the organization, which rakes in hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue every year, bought chimpanzees from Liberians who kept them as pets. Documents obtained by Mail Online show a pet chimpanzee called Brutus was sold to the Blood Center in 1981 for $100. One year later, the center bought a two-year-old female chimp named Anita for $85. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now back to the story. Volunteers from HSUS feed them daily for the time being. One of them, John Abayomi Zianue, is greeted by a chorus of screeching chimps every time he approaches one of the islands. They leap around wildly as John throws bananas, pawpaws, and other fresh fruit at their feet. This is their way of saying that the food is here, he explained as he did a quick head count. I can't see Samanta. A bullet is here. He's already eating. The chimps are part of me. They need help. They need attention. We cannot afford to lose these animals to hunger and sickness. But before volunteers like John arrived on the island, the chimpanzees were only getting fed once every other day, even when they were under the blood center's care, Kathleen Conley, vice president of HSUS, told Mail Online. They can't be returned to the wild since they have been exposed to various diseases and are also completely reliant on people because they were captured when they were infants. Many of the water systems on the islands aren't working, so they were getting hand-delivered cups given every other day. We firmly believe this problem wouldn't exist if the New York Blood Center never stepped foot in Liberia. A virologist who worked on the island said they chose chimpanzees because they are the only other species susceptible to hepatitis and were kept on the islands because they cannot swim. Preston Marks told the documentary makers of The Real Planet of the Apes, you need naive animals who haven't been used in experiments. A number of the animals died during the country's brutal civil war between 1999 and 2003, which claimed the lives of hundreds of civilians and left thousands homeless. One has to question what they were doing there in the first place, said the vice president of HSUS. Her organization launched a crowdfunding campaign to raise $150,000, which would provide funds to look after the chimps for five months. Within a single month, over $130,000 has already been raised. In November 2005, after 29 years in Liberia, the New York Blood Center announced that all research has been terminated. Alfred Prince, the ViLab's director at the time, said, Liberia is now peaceful. 15,000 UN peacekeepers are in residence, and free elections were held in October this year. 
We have 80 chimps, all of which live in social groups. We presently have six islands of 10 to 30 acres in a nearby river suitable for housing released groups. The Blood Center is looking for a dedicated primatologist who would welcome the opportunity. The director would, however, need a sponsoring institution or foundation to assume long-term responsibility and fiscal oversight. But in December 2005, in an article for the American Society of Primatologists entitled Leadership Sought for Chimpanzee Sanctuary in Liberia, Dr. Prince wrote, NYBC recognizes its responsibility to provide an endowment to fund the sanctuary for the lifetime care of the chimpanzees. However, Victoria O'Neill, a spokeswoman for the Blood Center, told the New York Times that this was Dr. Prince's opinion that was not authorized or approved by the Blood Center. She added that the center did not ever establish any endowment for animal care, chimpanzees included. She added the center never had any obligation for care for the chimps, contractual or otherwise, and withdrew support after a long period of unproductive discussions with the Liberian government about their responsibilities in this regard. During that time, we incurred millions of dollars of costs. She added that there was ongoing arbitration with the Liberian government. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.